Right, we are having a look today at a nice cardboard box. Not really. So inside this cardboard box, we should have the front undershield. Now, we've had a little bit of a look at it. So we've got half a clue, which is half more than we normally have. So this is a brand new accessory for our new Land Rover Defender. So let's get on and have a look. So in the box, we have got this. Oh, hold on. We've got a bonus bolt here. Let's have a look, we've got anything else in there, Gary? No, right, and we will discard that one. Right, so it all comes strapped together, which is quite cool, and it's quite heavy. I've got the scales here ready, but one thing that's a bit rubbish um, is that they, they, they sort of got this bag here, cable tied, but they've used like the cheapest bag on the heaviest thing, and as you can see, it's it's sort of ruptured. So you may want to, Land Rover Accessories guy may want to look at that. Well, I'm sure they'll watch this video. Yeah, they could have used a better bag than that. That's a bit, it wasn't even, to be fair, it wasn't even taped up, was it? So the zip bag one, anyway, I would improve that. It's, this is, I can't remember how much this cost, but it was a chunk of, it's a chunk of money. It's like four or 500 pounds, this is. This isn't, um, right, so we, we'll have to check on the instructions that we've got the right bolts but what have we got roughly let's have a look we got two bolts like that two bolts like that and these ones have got the thread lock on them um that one's not the same as that is it so we've got we've got a four a four or two a two and a one we've got any others hold on there you go right, so we got two two four two we'll have a look if that vaguely matches have they got yeah yeah they've got right let me get some cutters then and we'll we'll cut into oh there's some scissors there thank you go uh, almost like we prepared for it yeah. table trying to get that's a good idea though oh, that was the one for the bag wasn't it yeah. right so let's have a look what we've got so we have got this panel here made in belgium there you go Mm -mm. So that's a fairly heavy, and what I want to do is I want to, we'll weigh the one we take off, because there's sort of one of these on the car, but this is basically going to sit behind this under tray, and it's going to offer more protection. So I think the tow loop comes out of here or something, but this is going to give us more off-road protection. We'll have a look. Right. bumper that everyone's been watching so this I think is gonna replace this here so we're gonna take this under tray off and that under tray hides your your big loop here your big sort of recovery towing loop and if you get stuck and you're off road you're gonna have to get underneath take the four bolts out and get at that where I think the idea is with this one here that's gonna go in there you can see roughly that's quite nice isn't it the way it marries up with that styling plate there, and we'll be ready to go. So, I can, that's gonna look pretty smart, actually. I quite like that. Um, what's it made from? Let's have a look. So, it's made from aluminium. It's got a good, we'll measure that in a sec, Gary. And you can see they've TIG welded on some fittings. So it looks like it's got, rather than using these four mounting bolts here, it looks like it's gonna go much further underneath. And I think it's gonna pick up on the underbody guard that's on the car already to form a continuous underbody guard that goes through to here and then picks up on the rest so i think that looks pretty good we've got some sort of hooks here that looks like it's gonna i think that's as we install it to to make make it easier to sort of hook on that one's bent actually gary notice that yeah. look see compared to that one there look oh, yeah. looks like they both sort of shifted over so we've got some 
some packing issues because I think what where they cable tied that big metal bit to it, mm. I think it's been. Yeah, have to try yeah, that. Have to try that. So we we got some straightening to do there. Yeah, that is right. What else we got going on? And you got this this theme, but I've a, I don't quite know where I've got the two holes there. I can get this one for the main hoop. Maybe that's to give clearance for those bolts. You reckon? We'll have a look. Mm. We make it up. I, like, I do like that plastic bit though. I've got to be honest. That little plastic bit just adds a nice. That's right. There we go. Right. So. What have we got? Right, let's dive under the car. Right, so Gary, who's on the camera, has, right, first of all, before you do anything like this, obviously we've removed these panels, and let me put the link there, Gary. Boop, boop, boop. So we'll show you how to, we've done all that. Um, we've raised the car because we're gonna be doing some work underneath, and we don't have the luxury of a ramp. There we go. Now, the bar we've got to remove Gary is kindly, you can thank Gary in the comments, painted it yellow. So so it's clearer to see. It's, it'll be black on your car, but it was difficult to see what we're removing. So you can see you've got the tow loop here. And then either side of the tow loop, you've got these two bolts that are orange because we've got to remove them. And then you can see at the side, you've got a, a hose here. Now, we've only got it this side, but reading the manual, I think, some people will have those on both sides of the car. And then you've got this, this brake cooling duct here. Now the instructions say we've got to remove this one and this one. And the instructions also say we have to loosen these, this sort of cross member bolts, these four here. I'm not sure if you need to do that, we'll have a look. So what are we gonna do now? We are gonna remove this. Right, Gary, I'll do the film and you can do it. You've got it. All right, Gary's got his impact gun. What size? Uh, 15. 15 millimetre, so let's cover your ears. Let's have a look at those. Now, I think some of these bolts it said we need to retain and some of them replace. So there we go, there's the other one. That's it. They're both the same. Right, now what do you reckon? Some clip removal. Uh, do the pipe. That, yeah. That pipe just on like a little Peg type thing yeah, there. it's like a two-part clip in it. You've got two mm. options there. You could either, we couldn't work out quite how to do it. You could unclip the pipe. The instructions say unclip the pipe with that little thing. But as Gary was working it out, it just popped off as a sort of a little nipple head bit there. Hold on, where's my camera, Gary? I've lost my, I've lost <laughs> where I am. There we are. Yeah. Um, so that, that just fits over there and sort of clips in place. And then he's got one of those trim tools. That's just a fir tree, isn't it, Gary? Yeah. There's no two-part middle bit we've got to get out of that. No, that's that. How want the thing? Give it a bit more. That's yeah. it. Let's can I have a look at the fitting. Well, I can look at it the other side. It might be easier. Yeah, there you go. So we've got the fir tree fit in there. <laughs> right. Now, the other the other fixings. So that's us disconnected on that side, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Right, so the next thing we've got to do is we've got... There's a bolt that... I only took a bit of tree, but it goes up. Up underneath in... Oh, let me see. Oh, there you go. You might be able to see it around the back there. There you go. Gary's coloured it in. And we'll, 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 we'll see a bit more on the other side. We'll take the brake duct off. And that's 15 as well, is it, Gary? No, this one's a 13. 13. We've got a little long reach socket on there. So it's vertically upwards. Now, it, it's quite good because it hooks over at the top here. It's got a, like a little... And it goes in, so it's not going to fall on Gary's head, which is good. Right. And it's exactly the same on this side. But what I've asked Gary to do is take this whole duct off on this side. So it's only an extra popper. I'll whip that one out. Again, you could do it because I think that's all. That's... I mean, that's all that hold those on anyway. So for the sake of the extra clip, you, you may well decide to... Uh, God, that looks more like a mud scoop than an air. <laughs> right, so there you go. I wanted to get that off so you can you can see more clearly there. I'll get the light shining nicely. There you go, and there you are. We can watch Gary take that out. Huh? Yeah, so I think we can see there. And that should just pull out now, shouldn't it, Gary? That's the plan. 
just got to wriggle it around that pipe. Right, so let's have a let's let's have a weigh in, shall we, Gary? Let's get the scale set up, and let's have a weigh in and see. I mean, weight isn't a sole indication of strength, but right. So we've zeroed the scale. So if you can balance that one so that it's resting just on the, that one, is 2.75 kilograms. Sorry for the Americans that want it in pounds. You have to get on Google. Right then. Right, so that's nearly twice the weight. So that's 4.75 kilograms. So it's you, you're getting the idea. Just put the two next to each other on the table as well, Gary. Let's have a look where they've changed the, the design. If we can get it roughly, if you can hold it roughly in the same orientation, Gary, with those, those hooks the same, it might balance there. There we go. So we've got the two the same. So you can see it's got a, a thicker bar that runs across the front edge here. Obviously where it hooks on is pretty much the same. You, this is the original one. That's the new one. You've got an extra mounting point welded on, which I think will be a mounting point for that skid plate. And then you've got a lot more protection on the front. And then we've got this sort of guard over this bit. So I think generally there's not a lot different there. It looks like it's just beefed up a little and it's got this extra mounting point. And interestingly, it's got something going on there, hasn't it? And you can see that's all boxed in. So we'll, what I'm going to do now, we'll stop the video now. And to make it A, look better and B, to see how it goes on better. I'm going to go and see Harry in the paint booth and see if he'll paint this one for us bright red. Um, and much the same way as this one was yellow, we'll see what happens. Right. There we go, magically it's all painted red. So it's a good job Harry's done there and it'll allow us to see as we put it on what's, it'll make it much easier to see what we're doing basically. And it'll look cool. Now we're a little perplexed because I've gone back and checked and it reckons we should have two M10 by 25s with a hex head, two M10 by 25s with a domed head, and then four M10 by 30s. But we've got We've got two M10 by 25s with a dome head, two M10 by 25 with a square head. Then we got four M10 by 25s with a square head, again, with um, thread lock. And we've got another two M10 by 30s, but the, we should have four M10 by 30s. Um, so there we go. There's some random selection of bolts, but we'll work that out. Um, Right, and Gary, do you want to grab that? The paint's still a little wet, so easy as you go. And we'll offer that up. Now, in the genuine instructions, they do talk about if you have problems lining this up onto these hooks here, then you can undo the armature bolts. Um, but I'm not sure how that will help. So you've got to get that bit there, Gary, that slot over. I've got this side. If I point the camera. Uh, hang on, Bob, bring it down a second so I can go beyond. Yeah, hold on. Oh. I can go beyond that point. You got it? Am I helping you or not? I'm just trying to. That's it. I need to... I'm up this side. Yeah, I'm on my side. Cool. I'm sorry if that was a bit of dodgy filming. Oh, you need the M10 by. 25 so the first oh no did it say the armature bolts were first these ones. yeah what do you reckon yeah so any of these bolts don't do them up fully tightly so this is reusing the ones that came out sorry not armature bolts like the tow hook bolts so yeah i wouldn't just wind them in so that when we know we're in but i would leave them as loose as oh, I, I wouldn't use that gary just are, are you sure you're in the thread yeah yeah you, you're you're at super risk of cross threading using that beast so, so get a socket on it and okay. make sure you're in before we wind that into it. You may have to lift it up a little. Is that finding it? 
Yeah, yeah, don't go too tight. As long as he's in, we're good. That boot. Yeah. <laughs> You got a bit of move, and that may be actually where the armature helps. If you think about it, I was thinking, well, it's not going to make any difference because this bit is fixed the armature at both sides. But I think it's going to be getting that one. But I think Gary's Gary's fluked him, you, Gary? Oh, so. hey, look at that. So yeah, if you have trouble lining these up, careful, don't cross thread them. You'll have to loosen your armature, and hopefully, you can move that up which will move this up and move those bolts up and down. Right then, let's grab the two, um, so it says the M10 by 25s that go in here, but I'll, I'm gonna reuse those, all, those ones for now. And so it should be going up. So it's interesting to see actually, it doesn't, there's no captive nut, the thread is in that bracket there. Can you see that? The thread is, yeah. is actually inside there. Oh, a little too far, I think. <laughs> That's it, that looks good from on top. Right, we'll let Gary back with those, because we know those bolts are the right thread because they came out of those. All right, let's just double check the instructions. All right, so yeah, the first thing it tells you to do is to put the two bolts, reuse the two bolts that you took out next to the, the hook there. And it's saying, obviously, make sure you've got this corner lined up. Okay, and then I was then it says to put your ones in, and it refers to those as bolt C, which you can refer back to as the M10 by 25s, and then you put the other one in the other side. We've reused those fittings, so and there we go, and and line that up, which is what we just looked at there. Make sure that was good. Right, and then. We've got to put the brake pipe clips. We've got to take the brake pipe clips off the other one. So yeah, we have got this clip left on here. So we've got to take that that off. But that's just the barb fitting, if we look there. So we'll get that off. But obviously, we've only got the one cooling radiator on the one side. If you've got the two cooling radiators, one left, one right, you'll have two of these clips. So let me get this off. Right, so there's the clip there. So Gary's going to, it should be fairly clear where it goes. There's a little hole there. Oh, just lift that up and have a look. Yeah, yeah, you got the hole there on the side. Is that the right size, Gary? Should be yeah. fairly tight, yep. Yeah. And connect that back on. Okay, and then you put your poppers in for your brake duct. Obviously, we didn't take the brake duct fully out. There seems no reason to, unless you've got a problem lining up. Right, that's all good this side. I'm gonna put the brake duct back in. It goes in that bottom one on that cross member, does it? And then, there you go. That looks neat enough. Right, that's all that on. Right, looking good. Right, so that's all you can do now before installing the front bumper. So we've now got to reinstall the front bumper. We've got it all fitted there. So Gary and I will just slip that on quickly and then hopefully we can get the under tray on. So the next thing it says to do is use those little hooks. So we've had to straighten those hooks and it should clip up under through. And then, secondly, yeah, you can see there in the diagram, it's showing it hooking it up. So it's saying once you've got those hooked up, which should hold it, then you get it all around. And then it's a question of finding which bolt fixings they say to use. So it looks like the first ones it wants there are those two in the middle, which it's saying a D. So a D is the M10 by 30, which it says we should have four, but we only got two. So let's grab those. They're the longest ones we have. All right, and let's see if we can get those in. All right, so Gary's, let's have a look at the, so there we go. So we've straightened out these hooks here from the hand behind, you can see them. And Gary reckons he's worked out where they go. There's like this little cut out here and you can see the, it's quite good that we painted it red. You can see the little slot. So what it reckons, Gary, is these the first two bolts, actually it showed them going in here. But aren't they, where's that? Does that mean we've got to remove these two here? It hasn't told us to do that yet. I didn't see that. Do you reckon they're gonna, I reckon they're gonna line up with those two, don't you? I reckon. Yeah, so I reckon we're gonna have to spin those two out. 
I think yeah. these bits at the back here go to them as well. Go to them. Now, either I've missed that, so I reckon we've got to fire those out mm. and then hook it up. And then it'll go. So we've got, okay, so we're going we're gonna to go with this. We're going to take these two out, which are not the ones we had earlier, but the two behind, and then two behind that in this aluminium under tray. And you can see now what I was saying about the aluminium under tray now is going to go right from the front over this and continue down underneath the vehicle. If I fly you under the vehicle a bit, you can see we'll be continuous with that. It's quite a good job, really. So Gary's removed these from those underplate, and they are M10 by 25s by my reckoning. Um, which, and I guess they're giving you longer ones because you've got an extra thickness of aluminium to go through. Um, but they've only given me two in the pot, so we're going to have to sort that out with Land Rover. They're the one, I can see why now why you need four, but we'll keep going. We'll, we'll gloss over this. Right, so we're all there ready. So right, let's try and hook these hooks up in. It should, I guess, hold itself in part. Should it? Right, and then we've got to get those two bolts in, those M10 and those little holes there, Gary. If you can line those up. Do I need to wiggle it, or you got it? That looks good. Yeah, I don't think we'll do any of these up tight until we got them all in. Right. And then we'll put those, we'll, we'll reuse these others. I think we've got enough, enough thread on those, even though they should be M10 by 30s. Hopefully we've got a few threads in contact there. Yeah. Not many. We won't do them too tight. That seems to be tight. That seems to be tight. Good. We won't do them super tight with hand. Right. So then we just then all we're missing is these these front ones here, and we're we're looking good. Yeah, because that'll close up that gap at the front edge there. Yeah. So it's saying these front two here, we need to use screw E, and those were the the rounded ones. So that's the ones. In fact, so they've got a security thing on them. So that's supposed to be some sort of anti theft thing. I'm guessing. Um, luckily, they're six-sided, not those weird five-sided ones, right? There you go, Gary. There's those two. I'll give you one of those, Gary, and then I'll get you a, a Torx for that. All right, so there's one of them. It's a Torx T50, but it takes a bit of pushing up. It's sort of... Have you got that one, Gary, or do I need to push for it? Right, we fought those in, but what we had to do in the end, we had to loosen the two under here a fair bit pull it back towards us if I get sideways. So you have to pull it that way so that the angle of this hole was lined up. But these bolts don't seem quite long enough. I think you want an extra five millimeters on those. They're only just poking through. Right, there it is. That is what the underplate is. The overall effect is nice. I quite like our, so you can see our big, so you've got a big cup in here. You've got the stronger bars and you've got this tough aluminum plate that goes all the way through. So, good luck with that. And that's, obviously you can start to see our Raptor bumper. I've got my grill off being spray black, but we'll get that on the, get that all finished next week. But there you go, that's something to show you that. And we'll try, we'll, we'll try and stock these, but you're, we'll put the part number in the description below. That's the, um, what they call undershield. So that's the undershield fitted. Late on a Friday, right, we're off out of here now, aren't we Gary? Yeah.